Reigning TM Master Cup Series Drivers Champion Adrian Devereaux took out the Delano Polo Award for the first race of 2012. His teammate Luciano Soverol is on the outside of the front row. If there's one word I can use to describe the cars of the 2012 season, it's new. They all look radically different from each other, and they also look very different from the cars last year. They're a little boxier for the most part, with a few cars trying to take up the old bullet car image. However, I believe these new cars have much more downforce than last year's cars. The two Colton Morel uh, Altairs, driven by Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Salvarol, are radically different from the rest of the field. You'll see them in just a minute when I hand it off to Dan for the race. Thank you, Lance. Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Salvarol on the front row of the grid there. Those two CM Altairs, radically different from the rest of the field, as Lance already mentioned. Leonard Roderick and that orange Inglesby Sonic Boom. It's a new model for them in this series. Car number four on the inside of row two, having a great run uh, so far. During practice and in qualifying, the Inglesby's certainly look like they've picked up the pace from last year when they weren't really fast and weren't terribly reliable. That blue car is Yulia Nasova in the Katsev. Yes, the Katsev is one of the big stories coming into this week because the Katsevs are much more competitive than they were last year. Nasova qualified fifth, and she's having a go already. Oh, we got a smoker in the back. That's Craig Mummert driving one of the James Dalton cars. Uh, the new Dalton Blackbird, on the other end, hasn't really been uh, much to talk about. Uh, other than the fact that the Bolden engines in those uh, Dalton Blackbirds, uh, last year the Bolden engines were pretty were pretty fast, but not terribly reliable. This year they're just slower and not more reliable, as you can see here. Belen Kumandoros is starting the number 42 to Tino. Vijay Pushanda is supposed to be the driver of this car, but... He was in an Arla race yesterday, and he was in a massive crash, and the uh, track doctors didn't clear Pushana to race for precautionary reasons, so Kumandoros, who didn't really make a good name for himself in his only start last year, uh, had to step into this car at the last minute. He's not done so bad this week. Packer Carroll in the yellow Volpe, the black and yellow Volpe, car number two on the inside, goes to take the lead away from Nasova in the Maya Soft car. The second Volpe, Davina Henton of England, is following Ian Cooper in the 777 car to the front as well. Davina Henton and Packer Carroll both trying to fill Alexis Rainsford's shoes uh, in that team. Volpe's reserve driver, Chris Davenport, is in the race. However, he's driving for Black Diamond Racing. He'll be sharing this car with a couple other drivers throughout the year. Davenport is definitely one of the more colorful people on the grid. Kevin Dwyer in car number 72. Uh, one of the great American hopes of the future, Kevin Dwyer driving for Team SAR USA, one of two rookies driving for SAR USA. The other one is that 15 car, Blake Camphausen. But Kevin Dwyer was very quick in all the practice sessions, didn't qualify nearly as well as he'd like. Arto Kakinen is in that silver number nine car, taking Franz Redlich's seat at Gessler. And Michael Sykes in that uh, brilliantly uh, 44 car, brilliantly colored 44 car on the outside is Arto's old ride. Kakinen going to the front. Yamino Tenshi in car 20 is taking over the 25 car. This used to be the 44 car of Lewis Kingston. Dale Roswell is back in the series with Black Diamond Racing, driving the Racing for Palestine car. It's good to see Worthy Causes uh, still have a place on race cars. Roswell is not running that well right now, but uh, I have a feeling this could be one of those Dale Roswell type of races where he slowly drops to the back and then all of a sudden he shows up right at the end of the really fast car. Roswell has been very quick in all of the practice sessions and seeing him drop to the back right now is not really a surprise if you know Dale Roswell as well as I do. Lewis Kingston is running in the number 17 car. This is one of the starting moto entries. His teammate Tom Delgado will be out for a while. I've had him had uh, some medical issues during the offseason. And Azuma Kazuyama is in car 18. That is Lewis Kingston's team game, teammate. Kingston has been very uh, competitive here so far during the weekend. Didn't qualify all that well, but here are uh, the two Xenos cars, Marcus Leonard and Zach Duff. You can't get, uh, you want colorful personalities, there's two of them in the same team right there. And they're on their way to the front, uh, doing a very good job working as teammates right now to get around Arto Kekkonen in the 9 car. French rookie René Ricarmier appears to have lost the pack just a little bit. This is his second Master Cup start, he made his debut at Decatur last year. Ricarmier has been highly touted, and this week's been a little bit of a disaster, though, for the Majestic Motorsports team. Charlie Waters, on the other hand, has completely lost the pack. Uh, James Dalton Racing was supposed to be supplying the uh, chassis for Power Steering Incorporated. They have done so for the past couple of years. However, when PSI broke the contract between the two uh, organizations last year, James Dalton announced that he was going to form his own team. And I'm pretty sure the folks at Power Steering Incorporated are, are quite amused with uh, the Dalton's lack of success so far. Zelda Ashby and Scott Bates running towards the front. Scott Bates, 
That's a car that'll make anyone proud of being American. That 88 car, as he goes into the lead of the race right here around Ashby. It uh, doesn't look like they've gotten all the sponsor decals in that 55 car yet. But uh, Ashby has uh, been very strong here. Scott Bates, of course, is one of the masters of keeping momentum up. And he's very good on these larger ovals. Here's Danny Savin, the rock star, twice a Coriolis winner, the only man to win Coriolis back-to-back, as he finds the outside wall. It doesn't do any damage. Danny Savin is running for the Independence Trophy with this 81 car. The two Volpe mates run first and second at the moment. Kevin Dwyer, as you see there in the background, is up in the front. There is that number three car with Luciano Savarol. The Colton Morrell cars, we believe, are not at 100%. They're not at 100% right now. Both Devereaux and Savarol, we believe, are running engines that are somewhat tuned down. At least that's what the team is saying. You'll notice the decals on that uh, 24 car directly in front here, that red car. Those uh, decals, the Brandon Share Repair decals, are only put on Brandon LaRose Independent Trophy car. Uh, on race morning, so they really didn't have enough time to get the actual company logo there. They just had to get some uh, uh, text there, and it it looks kind of amusing, but um, they got a last-minute sponsor deal, and that'll hold them up. Oh, the second Dalton's gone, so that's Charlie Waters in the 30 car gone out of the race. Now, James Dalton told both his drivers they needed to score points before Cariola here. Packer Carroll and uh, Kevin Dwyer have been running each other very hard. In fact, Dwyer got ran into the wall by Packer Carroll. And here's how Kevin Dwyer takes that. Not too well at all. But uh, Packer Carroll and Kevin Dwyer get together. Carroll goes into the inside wall. And I really think that that was a case of payback there. We missed it but, but during that little exchange with the 30 car blowing up. But uh, Kevin Dwyer was run into the wall by Packer Carroll. And that's why Dwyer and, uh, is all the way at the back of the field the way he is. Now, it looks like Kevin Dwyer just sort of drifts up the racetrack, says, Oh, hello, Packer. Packer Carroll's had a bit of a habit of getting uh, un under people's skin the wrong way in his Master Cup career so far. But it um, seems like cooler heads could have prevailed there. Yulian Asova running very strong in the Cats of Car. You'll notice that Dale Roswell is coming to the front already, and when Roswell's at the front of the field before halfway, I'd get a little worried. There you'll see Nasova's team out on the inside, that black number seven. That's Jose Luis Martinez of, of Mexico there. We got our first caution of the race on lap 36, just a couple of laps after that little uh, incident with Packer Carroll and Kevin Dwyer. As most of the field comes in into the trying to pit, hit the pit lane for a green flag pit stop, Michael Madrigal in the 63 car uh, didn't really have his car all the way in the apron before he slowed down, and Marcus Leonard ran right into the back of him. Yamino Tenshi, the popular Japanese driver, goes out of the race under this yellow. They have mechanical problems with that uh, Juno, and she goes out immediately. Jose Luis Martinez is second. Blake Kamphausen driving for Team Star USA in that red 15 car is the race leader. Packer Carroll has got a ton of damage to that two car. Oh boy, it's not a good start for, uh, to his Volpe tenure. But, uh, I mean, Marcus Leonard appears to have some damage as well. You'll notice we got another caution pretty much immediately after the restart. Jose Luis Martinez apparently pit, realized he has a flat tire, panics, runs towards the pit lane for uh, Zach Duff in the five car is there. Martinez goes around, doesn't hit anything, but whoa, look out Luciano. That was Luciano Salvarol in the number three car. We're going to go on board with uh, Luciano right here. New sponsor on the Hodges Walter uh, car. This used to be the 13 car, but now it's carries number three. And whoa, that almost was a much bigger accident than it was. Ian Cooper in car number 777 is going to drop out of the race. Mechanical difficulties under that yellow to eliminate the second EFR journey. Here is the other one, though. Scott Bates in the 88th EFR journey A90 is up in the lead of the race. The two flash racing cars fell off the lead lap. They actually pitted during that first uh, before that first yellow came out, so they were all burned by that. Here's Adrian Devereaux in car number one going underneath Scott Bates, and there's the 8 car of Nasova. The 74 car is Scott Stoidler. He is a lap down. Bates resumes the lead of the race, assume the lead of the race. Roderick is off the lead lap in that four car, but that number four car is very quick. Blake Kamphausen appears that he's got a flat tire or something, and he panics, hits the pit lane. That, that's a pretty smart move, I would say. Ah, Ryan Matthews, the second of the Majestic Motorsports cars, is out of the race. That's a blown engine. Um, we're kind of surprised that Matthews got his master license because of his limited experience, but he's actually not done so bad this weekend. It's a shame that he went out so early. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, still leading the race. You'll notice the 55 car, Zelda Ashby is second, Zach Duff is third, Chris Johans is lurking back there in the distance in that white and, sort of white and gray 64. 
Going a little further back, Jacob Eichel, another one of the Independent Trophy contenders running in 11th place. Danny Salvin still on the lead lap in car 81. Bell and Kumandoros is running very strongly so far. He's really kept his nose clean so far, and I think we can applaud him for that. Kumandoros didn't earn too many friends last year. Looks like he's earning a lot of respect today. As now the field comes to lap, Packer Carroll in the two car. Carroll's holding his line, but it's not really a line the leaders would like him to run. Dale Roswell in the 22 car taking advantage, and also looks like he's going to make a charge at Nasova. Looking off the rear end of car number eight, as now Dale Roswell in that silver 22 car is uh, currently wearing Nasova as she pits on lap 73. This is a scheduled pit stop. Adrian Devereaux in first, Chris Johans in second. That's how they were in the championship last year. Devereaux won it by a single point, and he probably wouldn't have won it by a much larger, wider margin than he did if the, the Hodges Walter cars hadn't fallen apart more often. He had several mechanical difficulties, and that's really the only reason Johans was in contention. And it looks like Johans is now getting held up by Michael Sykes. Now Sykes is holding his line. He's, uh, he's holding the outside line. I don't really know why Johans couldn't get by him right there. There's Brandon Leroux in the Afterburner 24 car, another independent trophy car. He's uh, currently inside the points, but he's a lap down. Zelda Ashby and most of the tail enders pit on lap 77. Adrian Devereaux, Zach Duff, and Davina Henson are the last three cars to pit, and they hit the pit lane on lap 81. Coming into the pit lane, though, Adrian Devereaux had to deal with the 08 car of Anthony Griffith. Griffith was blocking Devereaux from entering his pit stall, and Devereaux decided he's going to spin the 08 car out, and then reversed into him a little bit. The officials don't take the pit lane incidents too kindly. I'm sure they'll uh, look at that one. But in the driver's meeting, they did say if you see someone on your right side that has to enter their pit stall, you have to give them uh, you have to give them room to go through you, go around you rather, uh, instead of what Adrian Devereaux did, which is um, just drive straight through the 08 car, which is not what they want to see happening. Yulia Nasova in the 8 car is leading the race. You'll notice. Three of the Independence Trophy cars are on the lead lap right now. Jacob Eichel's the 231. Arla Driver, Michael Madrigal in the M&J 63 car. And, of course, Danny Salvin, who's a little a uh, little ways back in the full throttle racing car. Nasova takes over the lead. Roderick is a lap down, and uh, he's not exactly playing well, He's not exactly playing too nice to the leaders. But as of right now, he's on the lead lap. If he gets, uh, gets, uh, gets around the leaders and a yellow comes out, he's all of a sudden back in contention to win this thing in car number four. However, the Inglesby unreliability strikes again, and Leonid Roderick doesn't get that chance, and he's going to drop out of the race. There is no uh, need for a yellow to come out, it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like Roderick's car was spraying fluid all over the racetrack. The engine just died. The final yellow of the race came on lap 116 of 140. And it involves Packer Carroll and Anthony Griffith, ah, the two black sheep of today. Anyway, Packer Carroll is clearly not looking in his mirrors, and he's going to move up the racetrack. The 08 car has got a huge run on him. And um, spotters and mirrors are probably a good thing to have uh, just to prevent incidents like that. Anyway, Adrian Devereaux is going to uh, still retain the lead of the race. Scott Bates second, Dale Roswell third. 14 cars on the lead lap. The two two Tinos both fell off the lead lap. Uh, Dan McKay in the 50 car has uh, been on a little bit of an off-cycle pit strategy. Well, it hasn't really worked out for him. As you see, Scott Bates going by Adrian Devereaux in car number one. And Scott Bates, of course, the master on super speedways, but he's also quite a quite uh, good on road courses and another uh, a lot of other different kinds of racetracks. Just Scott Bates, kind of one of those all-rounders, but in particular the super speedways he shines on. Of course, Bates won the last race of the season at Decatur, which is also a high-speed track. So you wonder if Bates is some sort of uh, magic in those EFR journeys that um, they seem to do quite well on these high-speed tracks. Here it is. Yulia Nasova in the 8 car as she as having another bid around Adrian Devereaux. Nasova going into the lead of the race, and there's less than 15 laps to go, so Nasova could potentially win this thing in the Katsiv, a car that really didn't do anything last year except run very slowly at the back of the field. Davina Henton in the 6 car is not a factor. Um, well, not really. N Henton could get in the way and impede Nasova a bit. And uh, that's exactly what Henton did to Devereaux. He impeded the one car a little bit, and Zelda Ashby got a run. Lewis Kingston showing up in that 17 car when it matters the most. And also Dale Roswell in the 22 car, although he's been kind of floating around the top 15, the whole top 10, top 15 the whole race. Now he's really making a go for it. You'll notice that white and red 18 car. That is Azuma Kazuyama. He's only in there as, uh, for a couple races. Michael Madrigal in, pos in position to take home the win with five laps to go. In that 63 car for M&J Racing, a great run 
for the uh, Independence Trophy driver. But Adrian Devereaux is going to get around some of the back markers and is going to have a run on current race leader Scott Bates. There's just two laps to go as they come back to the stripe. Adrian Devereaux is going to try to make a move around the 74 car of Scott Stoiler, who is off the lead lap, but still in the points. He is Stoiler is running his own race, the 24 of Laro there. Now, it's Adrian Devereaux and Scott Bates at the front of the field for the win. Devereaux on the inside, Bates on the outside, and Adrian Devereaux is going to pull it off, coming down the front straightaway to take the white flag. One lap to go as they come by. Kazuyama is coming into the picture now in that 18 car. Can the reserve driver take him? Oh, wait! Something's gone wrong with the 18, I think. Car 18 just dropped way off the pace suddenly. Wonder what something's definitely gone wrong with that 18 car. Disgusted, Kazuyama had a podium all lined up, and that's all gone for nothing. Car 18's going to have to dive into the pits as the rest of the field comes to take the checkered flag, and Adrian Devereaux starts his title defense off, pull the checkers. Car number one takes home the win, the first race of the season. Scott Bates, second takes home second place. Zelda Ashby completes the podium. Azuma Kazuyama all the way down in 14th place. He's got to feel gutted about that. Third was on the offering, but 14th is still a very credible effort. Credible effort. All four independent trophy cars scored points today. Uh, you'll notice that Danny Sovin came home 7th, Michael Madrigal 8th, Jacob Eicholtz in 12th, and Brandon Leroux in, t in 19th place. Also, the two Black Diamond Omecas, Dale Roswell and Chris Davenport, came home with points. And now, speaking of points, let's have a look at the championship standings. And what a shock. They look exactly the same as the race results because Adrian Devereaux took all the bonus points. This is also the first time we've seen a perfect 70, which is a perfect 70 is, of course, winning the pole, leading the most laps, and winning the race since Leonid Roderick back in Sweden of last year. And that's also only the second time we've seen that. Now let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings, and Danny Savin is on top of that with 70 points as well. The Independence Trophy is very close, and there are 17 cars that will have a run at it as the season goes on.